Hello, coders. Welcome back. Uh, Supernatural step 36 out of 100. Um, today is the day that we're going to add two things to the code, and that is um, when enemies are hit, uh, they... They are moved back a little bit, so we have to add some animation. We have to also uh, think of the direction that they are going, which will basically be in the direction that the that the player is pointing. So if the pointer is, is if the player is pointing right, and he hits an enemy, then the enemy will also be hit back to the right, and vice versa. And when an enemy is destroyed, uh, we will get a little um, uh, animation. We get a little puff of smoke, which will consist of three sprites, which are animated uh, as well, animated in the sense that they are uh, changed in shape and they are they just float up a little bit. So as we are, or as I'm used to doing, uh, I want to go back in the code. I mean, move to the back of the code where all the data is um, is added because we have a... I'm confused by this window now. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm just gonna move back to the very last change. And that is around here. Well, no, see, this thing confuses me. Uh, buh, 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 buh. uh we have a we have a new level level 10 uh added i'm not quite sure oh we have a couple of spiders there's there's this thing um objects can uh do a jump uh if they are at the end of a ledge um but it would also be nice if the spiders did random jump so uh, there's a little code that adds a jump to the spider uh, at random moments. Uh, and this level has some new spiders. Oh, let's see if I can, if I can, uh, I don't know if I don't have a controller attached, but let's see if I can build and run. This shows up, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Do I have fire? Wait a minute, let me set this up. Um, oh, that's not what I mean. Uh, joystick settings. I think it's key set A. Yes. No. Oh, there we go. Uh, this is not, this is just level one, isn't it? Um, but I can demonstrate uh, the, this is unfair, see that? <laughs> this bat is, uh, is caught in that, in that position there. Odd. But I can demonstrate the, um, oh. see, There, if I, if I hit him, he gets hit back. It's it's a constant animation, but let's keep firing until he's dead. Well, ah, see that? Puff of smoke, and they went up. I think something weird is going on with the, with the bat at the top. Look at him. He usually doesn't do that. He usually... Uh, Something has changed. <laughs> that's that's odd. Hasn't changed in the code, but something uh, appears to have changed because this blue bat in the corner, you uh, it used to be safe in this little corner here, and the bat would fly off, but now it seems to be caught there. Hmm. Uh, anyway, the hit back and the smoke. That's that's what we're uh, going to be adding. That's funny. And uh, we still haven't seen the level ten, so uh, we we can we can look at that later. Level ten, we 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 saw that we saw that, um, and we have to add some extra data to 
to get i'm just scrolling up now so we we have to add the level 10 to the series of levels um and this is all uh, pretty boring also we have to have a new type where are we five eight two nine i'm just scrolling up through the through the data this is was it 582929 here we are so we have a new um entry here for uh when the enemies are annoyed of course uh the explosion won't get annoyed because it lives too shortly it has uh, no hp to start with it it is a multicolor sprite because it has white and gray um we can have a look at the sprite as well it has a starting color of 15 which is uh which is gray it has a uh starting uh animation and it is not an enemy so that means that we cannot shoot the smoke and it cannot hurt us it has its own uh behavior when it's hurt i wonder <laughs> Hit behavior hurt. Oh, that's that's a standard bit of code. It, it it doesn't really, it can't be hurt, but it it needs an entry in the table, so we just take a default one. Um, this is an address, so the low and the high part. Uh, enemy behavior. It does have behavior because when it's uh, shot, it has to float up. So that we actually have a behavior explosion. And then we have these two tables, which are new, uh, which uh, for each active sprite, there is a hit back, uh, which can take a number of frames. Uh, is that this? Uh, I think we'll have to look at that. And then there's a hit back direction, which is either one or zero for left uh, and right so i think that covers the data let me check that i've got a new uh tool like a new diff tool i'll show it win merge uh and it's it's pretty good but i'm still getting used to the buttons this is what i what would i use to keep track uh we we uh, we moved around some data okay so here we go we can we can actually go look at the at the code now. Uh, we have a new sprite. Let's let's look at this. Uh, look at the actual uh, sprite, uh, shall we? I'll do it here. Uh, sprite editor. These are all the sprites. These are in in multicolor. So, but they don't have the the correct colors yet. So I'll white. Is that good? I don't know if this is the correct color, but you can see the oh, this is multicolor as well. Maybe this is supposed to be uh, twelve. I don't know, but you you can get a get kind of a feel. Background is the background white? No, the background is not white. The background is black. Now just looking at this sprite, what's that? Because that is a background color, isn't it? Oh, multicolor too may be white. Oh, look at that. That might be it. See? So this is like a puff of smoke. Three animations. It's pretty well done. So that's that. Um, okay. Now, let's have a look. Where's my win merge? I'll, I'll move this out of the way. And uh, we move all the way up here. Um, of course, we have a, a new sprite, so we have to uh, update this value. This is a base for, <coughs> excuse me, for uh, copying sprite data and calculating. Uh, so we have to update that. We have um, then we ha we have to um, uh, have some constants for the for the explosion. 
th these are the the animation fr um, sprites that you just saw 47 48 and 49 they have a little name now so that we can use them um, of course there's a new enemy type which is this type explosion which we will be referring to later in the code um, and then this is funny because this is level nine. Do you think the the uh, four four one? This is the starting level. I was scrolling down four four one. Where are we? Um, that says level zero. Let's make that level nine. And I think this is the new level. Let's have a see. All right, all right. See, this is this is where the where the spiders actually do their uh, do their random jumping, which <laughs> which you can see. We pick a number, uh, and and if it's if it's below five, uh, we we and like we 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 mask off the high, uh, uh, the most significant part of the bite, and then look at the. At what's left and if it's below five i think it's a 20 percent chance of them uh jumping but you can see they're pretty jumpy <laughs> this is that new level <laughs> that's funny okay okay um so that's that level now we want to see some code 2000 i i wonder i'm not sure because the the ide is upgraded as well in the meantime so can I go to a line number? I don't think I can. I wish I could. I wish I could jump to a line number. Just gonna try something. What's I did control G. That did nothing. <laughs> it just did this. No, I I, uh, I can't jump to a line number. Okay, um, we'll just have to scroll there. Two thousand, just about. Okay, um, uh, this this bit has moved. That's not. Uh, that's not what I wanted to show. It's this over here. The no enemy bit. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is when the enemy is killed. Yeah. Um, and the enemy is actually dead. Uh, normally, it would say uh, remove object here. But now we've, uh, we have some extra work to do. Uh, and it's, uh, and it's this. This looks a little out of place here because it does all the all the Vic and Sprite stuff, but uh, it's pretty direct. Yeah, so we uh, we we take the 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 Sprite type and we change the type in the Sprite active table to an explosion, which means on the next animation it will the system will will take the correct uh, shape and it'll show the uh, the cloud. It sets the uh, the color to 15 for this sprite um we go in the bit table to get the the correct value with only the bit set for this sprite uh, we or it to make sure that it is on so that we uh, whatever it was uh, this bit is now on and, and we write that value back this doesn't disturb the other bits that have their uh, their own values um then we uh, uh, uh load up the 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 first animation sprite and we uh and we show that um for this uh for this sprite the this sprite table for this this table for this sprite specifically we set uh the correct value for the uh, for the first frame then we set a a, a delay of zero and we set an animation position of zero 
Basically, we just initialize the thing. Um, this stuff that comes underneath it was already there. Generate a random number and create an item. This says that when a when a, um, an enemy is killed, um, an item uh, can be placed in uh, in in I guess in twenty percent of the time that we can then pick up. But before that, we 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 start the uh, the the animation. What could happen is that we start the animation and on the next game loop, um, uh, all of a sudden there's an item there as well. So. And that item is a new sprite, so it's it's put there. Okay, so so this basically sets it up. Uh, we're we're going to see in the rest of the code uh, some more information about what happens because this is now uh, it's now up to the um, uh, to the explosion behavior to animate and move this uh, this sprite. And that uh, let's have a look to the next thing that's interesting. Okay. Now, the hit back. We just take one, 3106. Oh, oh, 3106. Okay, so this is the behavior of the of the of the mummy. So what what's changed is uh, is 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 all all this is now a different than what it was. Um, what we do is we we take the current hit back value. Now this hit back value will be set when the sprite is hit, um, but by default it will be zero. And if it's zero, if it's if branch equals zero, no hit back, and the 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 behavior is is exactly what it was. So actually, we're looking at the code that is now run when the enemy is hit and it's turned into a ball of smoke. No, um, uh, not yet because it's not dead yet. But when it's hit back, so there's a there's a difference there. Um, because if it turns into a ball of smoke, the type changes and it's no longer a mummy, but it, it's an explosion. Now it's still a mummy. It's hit, but it's not dead. So we look at its hit back value. If it's if it's zero, which is the default value, then there's no hit back. If it is, it's very simple. We decrease the the hit back value from whatever it was. Uh, it's it defaults to eight, but we'll see that later. Um, we load the direction. If it's zero, we uh, move the sprite right because it goes to hit back right, which is right over here, and it just says object move right blocking, so it can't move right if it's blocked, and otherwise it's just moved right. Uh, and uh, in in the other uh, case, uh, it just goes left. And that's that's it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's really that easy. So, um, and... If, if we go to the behavior of the zombie, which is the next one, you'll see it's basically the same, the same code. Um, I would have uh, in a different assembler. I mean, this. Hmm, I would have made a, a, maybe a function of this. If if I jumped to the, I mean, this is a lot of code to add to the behavior of each enemy. And it's the same code, so that begs to be put in a function, so that you have you repeat this code only once, um, at the cost of of spending the extra time of jumping, you know. But uh, time at this moment isn't so much of an issue yet. And it's a this is a bit of a platform uh, to. Uh, you know, address my objection against uh, macros. Uh, you can make a macro out of this, uh, which is popular in, uh, in 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 Kick Assembler. Kick Assembler is one of the most popular assemblers out there at the moment, uh, and it uh, it's made the use of uh, macros very popular as well because it has a very powerful macro function. But the thing is that if I 
if I made a macro out of this, then I could reduce this to one line of code visibly in the code. And it would be very clear, but it would hide the fact that it repeats the code just like it is here in every function. So it sort of hides the fact that you use a lot of code. You have to be very uh, aware of that when you use macros. Uh, there are there are macros in, in this one as well. So this could have been a macro. It's not. Um, it's just a repeated code, nice and simple. Um, and you see, you know, what what you see is what you get. So all of the all of the sprites have this, and it's all exactly the same. So I'm not going to show you all of that. What I am going to show you is the random jumping. If I go to 37. I think that is here, and that must be the um, the behavior spider. If if we go to the lower end of this function, here it is, and it's really not a lot. Um, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, three, six, six, four. Oh, it's very very different. Um, well. Long story short, this is this is where where it happens. Um, so this is no fall handling. Update sprite fall, and we update that it's falling. Branch not equal. It is falling, and then we get to a point here where the spider is actually it's not jumping or it's not falling. It's just walking around. That is the moment to in the in the in the previous uh, version of the code we would just uh, end things there, but now uh, we generate a random number. We end uh, the the most significant bit of that, and then we compare it to two. If it's plus, then we go to is falling, which basically uh, handles the rest of the of the sprite, and otherwise uh, we go to jumping. And jumping is update sprite jump, which it, which it was before, but now we're calling this uh, randomly at a moment where the the spider really wasn't doing anything. So, uh, with a fairly uh, basically, we just had the idea let's let's call uh, a random jumping function. Well, the jumping function was already there. All we have to do is call it at a random time, and and this is all that that is added to do that. So. That, that was uh, that's quite clear. Um, do we have oh the the behavior explosion that would be nice to see. Is that something that we still have to see? Thirty eight oh four. Is that right? Here we are. So we start uh, by moving the sprite up. We. Um, we we don't wait. Normally we we wait uh, moving the sprite, but this sprite can always move up. We don't have to check whether it's blocked or whether it can or can't go up. We just move it up, um, and then we start uh, decreasing the animation delay. We load it. We compare it to three. If it's equal to three, then we can update the animation. Otherwise, we don't uh, do anything. This is called on every game loop. So basically, this is saying uh, wait three frames uh, before we can do the next animation. Well, when we can do the next animation, we immediately reset the animation delay for the for the next sprite. We increase the animation position. We load it. If it's had four updates, then the explosion is done, which means remove object. You know, it just removes the. Otherwise, it would have re removed the enemy or whatever. Now it removes the, the explosion. Um, if it's not time yet, we clear the carry and add uh, uh, one to the sprite explosion one. So this is the first animation sprite, and we we set that in the sprite pointer base. So now uh, the system knows that we have to show the next uh, step in the animation. So it's it's a matter of matching the number of animations to uh, uh, to this number. Uh, once we've uh, gone over that, then we're done, right? So this is 
this is all it does. It doesn't have to do anything else. There's no a hit or whatever. It's just very simple. Um, moving something up a couple of steps. It might look even better. And, and if, you know, if, if you added more, I mean, this this could be a great explosion if if you wanted to. You just add a couple of sprites and 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 put them in the right order and update these numbers, and you can go as crazy as you like. You can go faster, you know. Uh, so uh, yeah. You, you, this is you can be creative here. So that's that. That's the explosion behavior done. Um, okay, now hit behavior when hurt. We have to look at that as well because that's the only thing that we haven't seen yet. Uh, Thirty-eight, six, seven. Because now we 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 have everything, but we we don't have anything that says you know to to, to kick it off. So once we hit a uh hit an enemy uh the game loop calls a function specific to that enemy so here you can see the sprite hit back so in normal operation when you uh initialize uh, an enemy the sprite hit back value is zero and when it's hit it a it's actually set to eight so that you can you know can also work with double hits if you wanted to uh, anyway, it's set to 8. Uh, we take the sprite uh, direction. If we don't add an index, we get the first value of this table, which is the player direction. Now, like I said, if the player is pointing right and we hit an enemy, then the, the, the sprite hit back direction is the same direction as the enemy is looking in. So we increase the sprite annoyed thing. Um... We take the type. Well, this is all all the same. Basically, we just uh, change this uh, this hit back direction and the and the and the hit back indicator basically, and we do that for all of the behaviors. And well, I I guess the the we we haven't looked at the at the actual initialization of this value, but when you uh, set up the the level level object. Um, I know this scrolling can be a little bit confusing, but this is this is the code that sets up the level, and you can see that we load zero into the accumulator here, and then we we uh, set the hit back for each object to to zero by default, and that's it. That's all the all the changes. Uh, this is nothing else. Um, so that, that's it for step 36, uh, and I think step 37 is going to be sound. I'm not sure yet, but, um, thanks for watching anyway, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>